Hi, I'm Darren of Isotonic Studios. Today we're going to be looking at bindings, a new add-on accessory for Clipex Pro. Um, what I'm going to be using for this demonstration is an Allen & Heath uh, K2 controller. It's an awesome controller because it's got knobs, it's got faders, it's got buttons. It hasn't got a control surface in Ableton Live. You could build one, um, it's a bit of a ball lake to be fair. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into the ultimate accessory controller uh, so I can take it along with me um, when I perform using my Push 2 DJ set. We're going to set up a few basic bindings and then in the second video we're going to look at creating something even more complex. Now bindings themselves are very similar to MIDI mapping but they actually get around some of the failings of MIDI mapping. Um, for example I've got what looks like a four channel strip here uh, so I can have high mids and lows and the volume fader but the second I directly MIDI map I'm stuck with that control so this will always control track one. Now bindings allows you to dynamically change those mappings. So if I wanted to switch that fader to track four or use it on the currently selected track, perhaps map the, the faders, the sends, or focus on a specific device upon the track, all of that can be changed dynamically as I move around my set with the selected track, or I can actually send in some bind actions, change those, and actually perform some tricks on the last parameter that was moved in my bindings. We're gonna show you how easy it is to set up and then we're gonna dig a bit deeper. Let's follow along. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to basically set up the, uh, the K1. Uh, I've just switched over for this. It's, it's got one layer. There's no levels uh, and layers and stuff like that to confuse things. Um, so. The controls you see here are literally the controls you've got, so you need to make the most of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Live, into Preferences, and I've got my control surface here, the Clipex Pro. You can see that the uh, Track 1 Scene 1 is surrounded with the little red box there to show me it's active, and I've got the input and the output set as the K1. Now. What I like to do is do a bit of research before these videos and one of the things that uh, I found was quite useful, uh, the fact that I've lost the manual, the, the, the controller there, was that I could quite easily create a track, uh, sorry, a scene per kind of row of control and as you can see it, it's four across so I've got four audio tracks here and as I've got this actually as the K1 set up as a MIDI controller as well as being the input and the output of the control surface then I just simply went into MIDI map mode, clicked on my clip slot da -da -da, and press the buttons. I'd quite simply just take a quick screenshot of that setup and I've got that printed out, and that's my reference guide for actually writing the bindings themselves. I've got my binding set here, and it's actually an extension of my previous video that I did for Macrobat. Uh, it contains within it the Isotonic DJ Sender, which when I'm using my uh, Ableton Push, what I'm able to do is jump to the master track and select bass, mid, high, gain, uh, and have that controlled by the eight, con uh, eight encoders on the push across all eight tracks. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to add the Allen and Heath as a controller to supplement the push to, okay? So, I've got a couple of things on here. I've got some pre-stutter FX with uh, some beat repeats in. I've got my DJ sender, post-stutter FX, and I've got a Max for Live device. So, how you actually set up your bindings, uh, let's go to my finder, is you have a button bindings text and an encoder bindings text file. Now that's installed into your ClipX Pro folder and effectively you have one of those within every X script that you install. So if you want six controllers running button bindings and encoder bindings, you can quite easily do that. You simply open up each of the files in each, it's got some details in there, uh, effectively for how it works, what you can map it to, the uh, parameter kind of syntax for how to do it, uh, and what we're going to be doing is setting up some stuff that works on the selected track. Now as ever, it's always best to refer to the manual, 
<clears throat> but in each of these binaries texts, as I mentioned, there is a guide to how to set this out. Now, very simply put, I'm gonna look at the encoder bindings first and then look at the button bindings. Realistically, you want to be mapping this to a continuous parameter. So something like a volume or a, a dial or, or something like that. Something that isn't just on and necessarily off. You can use that for the bun buttons bindings and get LED feedback of bi-directional, but for the encoder bindings, you want something that's got a range. Now, the syntax is so simple. Look, you name a control, and that name is something that you may refer to later if you're gonna use a bind uh, control, uh, uh, sorry, a bind action and change the setting. But you're gonna set up your default bindings in this text file. Now. This is saying, quite simply, Fader 1 is transmitting on MIDI channel 15. It's sending CC16. It's an absolute value, uh, so it's not an encoder that's uh, endless, effectively. I do want it to observe the value scaling, the pickup, the takeover mode that I've set in the preferences. And this, effectively, is the selected tracks volume. So. All you need to do is save that uh, each time you've made any changes. We'll go back to our live set, and just to catch up with that, we'll open the same set again, and that effectively will restart the control surface and it will pick up your changes. So let's have a look there. And if I move this here, we have nothing. There we go, lovely. Excellent. So, what if we want to change that up? Well, let's grab a clip, it's any old clip, and I am going to rewrite this, uh, get rid of that. So, bind, bit, that's what I wanna do. And I wanna change up fader one, and I wanna change that to selected track. Uh, in capital letters, and this time I'm gonna go for send A. Now let's see if that's worked. Okay. Ah. So by triggering my X clip, I can, I've actually changed, you can see there, what it's uh, mapped it to. Now of course this is gonna work with any of your X actions, so you could have it that as a, uh, a locator, is set within your arrangement view. As it passes, it will change the MIDI mappings for you there. Uh, you could have it by triggering a scene name and uh, in the same way, let's do that. Control R, bracket, bracket, uh, bind, fade, ooh, bind fader, underscore one, let's do cell and send. This time let's go for B. And in this case, fired off our scene, and now we're looking after send B. Alternatively, you can send those bindings in via your X actions, so you can actually set off uh, and trigger a whole set of bindings. It doesn't have to be just one on one. You could have a complete long list of macro that actually switches your mappings by pressing one of those push encoders. Alternatively, you could put those actions into a Max for Live device and have those triggered elsewhere. Any of the X actions will work. All of your bindings can be written as macros so you can extend those further. And then there's some other stuff you can do. And for that, I'm gonna to refer to the manual. Let's have a look. So, uh, let's go to the top. Uh, I like the way that Stray set this out because anything that uh, has changed, he gives me a little, uh, there we go. I can go to optional accessories and by using the bind action. So I've got that. Let's have a look what else is in there. So bound P. So adjust the value of the last parameter that was just adjusted by the bindings accessory. This is a continuous parameter. Okay. So let's go and duplicate that. Duplicate and let's rename that clip to bind P. And what's the syntax? We are gonna do bound P 100. Okay. Uh, bound P. Ooh, look at that. 
So, Control R. Uh, so if I move, I can always guarantee that I'm sending it back to kind of a reset level, if you like. I'll change that one, I could do naught. Uh, excellent, and that's taking it back to zero. What else can I do? Bound P random. Okay, let's try that. Control R, R, N, D. Excellent. Ooh, I'm gonna have some fun with that. 